Hey, good morning, people. Good to be with you. Just a quick shout out right now, just to some of our American friends, just uh, continuing to remember the Starkey family in prayer and just encouragement for them. We're also so grateful for the UBC team that have been here from Houston and have been working so hard in our community, running holiday Bible clubs and epic conferences for teenagers. They've had the most incredible weekend. We couldn't do it without you guys. So on behalf of all of us here, we just want to say thank you. And also to Astrid and Lorena, our two Norwegian stars. You guys come and you shine really bright here, man. And we're so grateful for the fact that you've taken time out of your busy schedules to come and spend with us here. We bid you farewell and uh, we look forward to seeing you all again sometime. But right now, we're talking about being peacemakers. And I look at these people that we've just acknowledged and I see them playing a beautiful peacemaker role. But the interesting thing is, you know what? They don't have to do that. They have peace with God. I'm sure they have peace with themselves over the things we've been talking about. But they have chosen to pay a price here to come out to Africa and to, to be like a, that bridge of taking the hand of the hurting and the hand of, the, of God and joining them together. And now they go home again. And I just think that that role for us as believers is fundamental in what it means to be a child of God, because that's a characteristic that they should have. When I look in Scripture again, we're referring to Moses. Moses, in the book of Numbers, was confronted by a time when he was right. His uh, brother and sister Aaron and Miriam had, had gone against him. And they said, Moses, how come you get all the limelight? Moses, how come you get, the, get to talk to God one-on-one? -on -one? Doesn't he know that we're just as good as you? And in their jealousy and in their bitterness and their anger, they rallied against Moses. And God was upset with that. You don't want to touch God's anointed. They try to do that. And so God came to Moses and said, I've seen what Miriam and, and Aaron have done. And, I, and I'm angry with them. I need you to call a meeting. And so they call a meeting, God comes, and he judged them harshly. And he gave to Miriam uh, leprosy and said, you're going to be unclean for a good while. Moses saw this and he said, you know what? As much as they deserve that punishment, as much as it's legitimate, it's just not helpful. And so Moses went to God and he appealed to God on their behalf and said, Lord, these are my brothers and my sisters. These are the people you've caused. Lord, won't you forgive them so that we as human beings can be reconciled? We reconciled to God. God's reconciled to us. Now the next phase of being a peacemaker is to bring reconciliation between people. That's a role many of you people can actually pay. You can play that role quite easily when you look at some of the things in your family and your business. Don't take sides too quickly when you hear one side of an argument. Don't be like me, where I hear one side and I'm all over it, and then I hear the other side and I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm not so right after all. And in your intervention, you have to acknowledge that nobody is ever totally right. There's always percentages to this thing. And to bring a peacemaker role into that is something that is so beautiful. It's something that is so credible. And when you bring peace between people, God smiles on that. Troublers, we like scandal. We like scandal. And we like to take sides. We like to judge people. We like to offer our opinions. And we like to add sometimes to the rumors that there have been said about either side of the party that we're talking about. People, that's not peacemaking. This is making it worse. But something inside of us leans towards that side. Is that not true? And yet God is saying, avoid that leaning. Avoid leaning in that direction of judgmental attitudes, of making the war between people even worse. Go in as a peacemaker. Not trying to fix everything, because you never will. But go to bring peace between people is just what Jesus did for us and wants us to do as well. And so we might see Moses in this amazing story of uh, in numbers of Miriam and Aaron and, and himself. And he says, God, I'm going to intervene here. Can you help me to restore the relationship that we once had? Now, I know I'm not so naive. 
is to think that every relationship can be restored to a particular point where it was before. They would be very naive to think that. But do your best. The Bible says, be at peace with everyone as best as possible. There are some people that just don't want to be at peace with you. Well, it doesn't mean you don't be at peace with them. And in order to be at peace with them, it means you don't trash them. It means you don't you know, run wild over their reputation. It means you don't add to the already existing hurt. That's a role that a peacemaker needs to make. There will always be people in our lives that are not going to like us or disagree with us. That doesn't mean we have to make war with them. It doesn't mean we have to trash them. It just means we take a quieter position and we encourage people to be united together. This is that beautiful verse where it says, Blessed, the Lord is blessed when people are dwelt together in unity. It's like oil running over the beard of the beard of Aaron. And it's a beautiful sign of the anointing and the pleasing of God with people that do that. I don't know about you. I really want that. I want that anointing. I want that affirmation from God. And now I know how to get it. Hope you do too. Have a good day. Bye-bye.